I see it's common knowledge, and I'm so used to hearing this that antibiotics dry up blood. <laughs> God have mercy upon This is the reason for the belief by some that you have to use antibiotics with blood tonic, or you have to use blood tonic after completing a dose of antibiotics. <laughs> I have to tell myself that there's no better time to address this than now. Particularly after receiving a very disturbing mail this morning. I'll tell you more about the email shortly. Close to half of people who watch my videos are yet to subscribe to my channel. Why? 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 But why? No, I, I don't understand them. You think it's my fine boy? Hit the subscribe button. The subscribe button. The subscribe button. This man! Do you know how bad this issue of believing that antibiotics suck up blood? Do you know how bad it is? Even when you tell patients that they don't need to take blood tonic after taking the antibiotics that you prescribe, some of you will still go ahead at home and buy blood tonic and use it all the same. As if to say, doctor, you are your own. You are talking trash. Mm -hmm. okay. You have made a good point, but you see that thing that is on your mind. Most of you, you will still do it. Hey. And I'm like, where did all this come from? Yeah. I received an email from Antibiotics Republic all over the world. They sent the mail to my Gmail address, drfgeek2023 at gmail.com. Doctor as in dear, as shown on the screen. But, but by the way, do you know you can also reach out to me via that email? You got the point now. The mail was signed by all the members of the association. I mean, so many signatures. I saw signatures from Ciprofloxacin, Cephalozin, Amoxicillin, Flagyl, Dosicycline, Azithromycin, Erythromycin, kept. I mean, among all of them, the signature plenty. In fact, I saw their Secretary General signature bagada like this. I mean, that was honorable augmenting. I'm like, wow, this must be a really serious matter. Yes, now. What was in the mail? They said I should please be their advocate on a matter. You. Nobody know you. When they explained the thing to me, Mr. Rizina, this must actually be the work of the enemies. What was what happened have to do with this? I strongly suspect that is the bad guys they are after, the bacteria that are now trying to blackmail them. Sorry, oh, sorry, oh, hey God, not allowed them to kill you. Oh, dear antibiotics, I'm so sorry for your defamation. We will get to the root of this matter. God, no go shame us. So you hear something as um, I need to take blood on doctor, doctor, please, can you please can you blood on for me? Can you please? I just completed antibiotic and the thing has dried on my blood. What did you just say? Don't let me battle. Oh, thank God now. All this rumor that you are sharing. Continue. See, I don't have a problem with you taking blood on it, okay? That's if you really need it. The truth is that most of the people clamoring that they need blood on it don't actually need them. But the problem I have is you saying that you need blood on it because antibiotics suck your blood. Me, Angelina. Did you see it with your Koro Koro eyes? When did antibiotics fall to vampire? If you want to use blood tonic, talk up. Talk up, say, blood tonic, they hungry you. If it be true, my brain no good answer. If there's any drug that you want to even say dries up blood, that's if you insist on using that word dry up blood or suck blood. That would be your anti-malaria, not antibiotics. No, I can't, I can't accept that. There's even no such thing as a drug drying up blood or sucking blood. I mean, but let's talk about the anti-malaria. Let me explain a little bit. Okay. Yeah, what do you mean? When people get infested with malaria, the parasite infests specifically the red cells in your blood. The way anti-malaria work is to destroy not just the malaria parasite but also the infested red blood cells. So that is you indirectly losing some red blood cells whenever you treat malaria. You mean this way they talk? Yes. But the amount destroyed is usually so small compared to the total red blood cells in your body. So the destroyed red blood cells are usually not significant enough to affect the total blood level. Except, of course, in the degree of parasitemia, that, that is, the total amount of malaria parasites is really, really gross. More like having hundreds of thousands of malaria parasites in your bloodstream. At that point, what you've got is not just ordinary, uncomplicated malaria. That would be a severe form of malaria. I don't see what hell I beg, madam. And if you grew up in this part of the world and you are above five years old, you're not likely to have a severe form of malaria. Why? Because you are likely to be immune against malaria already. I mean, you probably have developed malaria a couple of times and your body would have built some shock absorbers over time, such that um, malaria is not likely to shock you as much anymore. That's wonderful. It's supposed to be like that tonight. <laughs> Some scenario of the malaria parasite affecting a significant portion 
of your red blood cells to such a degree as to cause shortage of blood. It happens more in children. Oh, why now? In non-immune immigrants. Those are people who migrated to the tropics, to this part of the world. How many times would they tell you before you know that Nigeria is not for you? Or in people who have other conditions, comorbidities, that suppresses the immune system, such as in pregnancy. What is wrong you need? What is, what is bad? Such as in cancers, sickle cell disease, and so on. So in those category of people, there could be severe form of malaria, and then you could have malaria leading to shortage of blood, and even after malaria treatment in such you will actually see symptoms suggesting that the blood cells are you know being broken down rapidly they are being destroyed what we term hemolysis in, a, in the medical world i don't know association these symptoms may include passage of coca-cola color urine hey not be juju be that yellowish discoloration of the eyeball the sclera what we call jaundice and so on so in summary i just said that shortage of blood what we call anemia is possible with malaria infestation and also with anti-malaria use in some cases so if there's any drug that you people should accuse of sucking people's blood or drying up blood whenever it's used that would be your anti-malarias mm. not antibiotics yeah. exactly mm. And like I explained, that doesn't even happen at all time. That being said, it doesn't mean you should start using blood tonic whenever you're using your antimalaria. Viewers, we shouldn't do that. Because if your blood tonic has vitamin C in it, which is the case with most blood tonics out there, and you now use it with your ACT, that means you're already doing yourself. <laughs> Some of you need to show she didn't speak no Korean. <laughs> Because the anti-malaria will not work properly, it won't work well. Vitamin C has something it does to your anti-malaria. Would, would it be that? It's therefore advisable that you use your blood tonic after completing your anti-malaria. That's if it's needed at all. Sometimes the shortage of blood that follow malaria infestation or anti-malaria treatment may be so profound that we get to transfuse such an individual with blood, I mean real blood. No, get the so back to the case at hand. Today, I'm not a regular doctor. I'm functioning as an advocate of the Supreme Court of Justice. You see, for this life, you don't go make person they use former eye, the judge person. <laughs> My clients, the antibiotics, know nothing about sucking blood or drying up blood that they have been accused of. How do antibiotics even work? Antibiotics work by blocking vital processes in the bacteria. Some antibiotics work by attacking the bacterial cell covering. How you manage me? Some disrupt the processes of the replication, the multiplication of the bacteria. Others interfere with the bacteria's ability to make proteins, which are necessary for their survivors, and so on and so forth. In all of these mechanisms I've mentioned, by which antibiotics carry out their function, that is by which they kill the bacteria. None of them has to do with destroying blood cells. You are right. Uh, having said that, the only situation where antibiotics does something that looks like sucking people's blood is in a drug reaction. <laughs> Not like that's what the drug does on the norms, you know, but a drug reaction, something just went wrong. That's the problem. Man. I don't like him at all. Like drug, that. And it's in a drug reaction that we call drug induced immune hemolytic anemia look at the kind of grammar you're speaking <laughs> sorry sorry about the head aching medical jargon and this is a situation where the antibiotics causes your immune system to begin to see your red blood cells as foreigners as enemies so the body begins to attack its own red blood cells wonderful shall never end interesting isn't it or not at all when this happens it's not as interesting as you think and uh, that is very very real don't tell me that ah that was what i had i can read your mind already taking that ah, okay that was what i had that's about to suck my blood you know they here waiting with the talk <laughs> ah. so, like one in millions oh, really? that's why you probably haven't heard anything of sorts before in this drug reaction it's not that you will believe the antibiotics is drying up your blood. You will actually see the evidences that your red blood cells are being destroyed. They are being broken down. You will see that color urine, like I mentioned before. You will see jaundice. And again, like I said, that happens on very rare occasions. <laughs> so many of you guys who have gone out there 
claiming the antibiotics have dried up your blood. Never add that reaction. I can I can be sure that I can bet on that. Will you stop pretending? But you have joined those who have been paid to badmouth my clients. Any more of that from you, I'll make sure you spend the next 10 years in Greek prison. You need to ask for forgiveness. You need to ask for forgiveness. Don't worry, I will change. Leave your comments in the comment section. I'll personally respond to them all. Please make this video go viral. Share with your friends and your loved ones and your statuses till we get the right justice for my clients. Justice for the antibiotics. See you again in my next video. Remember, your health comes first.